On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. Shans, we love to bring the big guns to the W and I've got to say, is there a bigger gun than the gun? And I'm a pacifist, okay? I'm not talking a literal gun. I'm talking a human gun, a person who plays AFLW. And I've got to say, when I see this footballer, I just feel like at one with the world because she's one of my favourite players to watch. It is Karen Paxman, a five-time All-Australian in the AFLW, who is hot off an 18-touch game and a two-point win over North Melbourne. And in round one, 24 touches in the 18-point win over Adelaide. And if you don't mind, has just, just notched her 52nd AFLW game. Karen Paxman, it is the warmest welcome to the W and it is great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. And look, I really, I was hearing Sam talk about big guns and I was thinking about my arms, but they've really deflated <laughs> over the last couple of years. So it is really good to have you back here. And um, I must say, I even myself have just, I've always admired watching you, but mm. your form in the last two weeks has been phenomenal. But we're going to get to that. But first of all, um, huge game on Friday night at the G. Um, but for me, you know, being able to tie it into this new new timing of the season and how did it feel to have that double up with the men's final after? What was the prep like? What was the game like? Did you stay focused on your own or was it a big occasion for the team? Yeah, I guess, you know, any opportunity to play um, on a ground like the G, super exciting. Um, we were pretty excited as soon as we found out the, the game, um, yeah, we were going to be playing there. So, uh, and I guess, yeah, in terms of um, for women's football, I think it's um, I think it's a really positive shift in a lot of ways as well to, to have that opportunity. Um, and certainly before the men's game, I guess, you know, there would be probably still a lot of, uh, Melbourne members or, or AFL men's, um, you know, supporters that, that aren't connected with women's footy. So to give them that, I guess, opportunity to, to have a look at what we um, are producing and, and our game and how it's growing and for them to kind of have an opportunity to be involved. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a, a for us thing. And we chat about the G, and obviously we know it's a very iconic ground, but talk us through what is it actually like to play on the pitch there because there's always so much conversation around. I love the suburban ground, um, but uh, what is it like to play? Is the, the grounds different? Is there one you prefer to play on? Yeah, certainly I, th I think suburban grounds do have that community kind of feel. Um, but, you know, I guess when you're thinking about the MCG and... and, and grounds like that like marble um certainly the surface i, I feel like it's it's a really fast kind of i guess deck or, or ground in, in terms of how the ball just moves on it and you kind of feel lighter out there i feel like the game a much faster um so I, I love i love playing on the g um on friday night um and, and i think it suits yeah certainly our our girls as well and our game style so we just yeah we're revved up when we know we're playing out there but um, yeah, I guess, again, there's pros and cons. You, you think about community grounds and, um, you know, I think our game on Friday night, there probably were a lot of um, AFLW supporters that weren't able to get out there. Um, just given I know ticketing was um, certainly, yeah, you had to purchase a ticket for, for that um, men's final. So, you know, I, I guess there's a little bit of work probably around that space to, to make sure AFLW fans can and still access those games. But... Certainly when we get an opportunity, I think women's footy playing on those um, on those types of grounds, it's, um, it, it's, yeah, it's definitely a positive. We heard the Essendon and Hawthorne coaches, Natalie Wood and Beck Goddard, re-marvel saying, put us on these platforms and we will play better footy. We'll give you a better product. Is that how it feels, Karen, when you play? You say you feel lighter. Do you think you actually play better footy? As through my experience, I, I think so. I just, uh, like, again, I, I think the whether or not it's how true or not this is, I'm not a, a turf, um, <laughs> you know, I don't... I don't know <laughs> You're not getting out there on the mower. Eden Zanker in our team is actually a turf manager, so she'd probably be able to give you a little bit more insight around um, that sort of stuff. But, yeah, the game, it does feel faster. Um, the ball moves quicker. Mm. Uh, and I don't know if you just walk a little bit taller because you're out on, on such a beautiful ground, but... 
Um, yeah, I think women's footy um, and playing on those grounds, yeah, I think it's definitely a, a positive and hopefully we can get more games, more games on the G and Marvel and, and grounds like that. Well, I know even just from my experience of playing for not long, but the few games that I did play at Marvel, just the difference in not having as much breeze affect the kick either was something that I noticed. So, yeah, I definitely hear what you're saying. I wonder, Karen, was there anything, and clearly there was so much to love about it, but, you know, there was a time not so long ago where, um, you know, double headers, men's and women's, put the fear of God into to stadiums and, and the competition itself. And they were like, you know, change rooms, access, the turf, you know, <laughs> there were all these reasons why not. Was there anything that what still could use some improvement? I did wonder about your change room access with a, a men's final following you, those kinds of things. Things. Was there anything that needs a tinker still? Um, yeah, I guess logistically um, for, for those people who are involved in that space, I guess it would be would be a bit of shuffling and, um, yeah, heavy organisation. But in terms of our preparation and resources and um, the environment that we were in pre-game and, and post-game, um, I felt like we were quite looked after and there wasn't anything that stands out to me that, you know, where in the past maybe at certain times, you know, obviously women have... Yeah, maybe being um, put in a smaller change room or yep. there's, there's no space or um, things like that. But, um, yeah, our experience anyway, Friday night and, and previous to that has been all positive. So, um, yeah. That is good to hear. Now, let's rewind to round one because it was enormous, your grand final rematch, your season six grand final rematch. Um, what did beating Adelaide do to the psychology of your team? Yeah, I guess, you know, we definitely went there and we we, we had a job to do and, and we were all, I guess, you know, um, thinking about that grand final win and previous times we had played Adelaide, I think the three, two or three times prior to that, obviously they, they had the win on us. So we, you know, psychologically, yeah, certainly winning, winning in round one, um, yeah, it, it's hard to measure, I guess, but... Coming away from that game um, and, and having that win down, I think moving forward and into this season, it, it would yeah, it would do a lot for the group. And personally, yeah, just to just to get that win, I guess it um, it cements that we're heading in the right direction. And um, certainly, looking back on the grand final and previous times we've played them, things haven't gone our way, um, and, and we've needed tweaks in what we're doing and in the pre-season we, we've made those adjustments and to, to be able to go out round one and execute those and um, come away with that first win against them I think yeah it does wonders for the group and um, allows us to build from there um, in a positive way heading into further rounds of season yeah. Well, you had the five trades in the off-season, which was very short, um, but you did manage to keep the core group together. Um, I'm so interested. Was that something that was said? Did you all get together after last season and say, hey, look, we're close. We know there's going to be money thrown around. We know there's going to be deals on the table. Let's stick together. Or was it just a feeling within the group that made that core group stay? Yeah, I think we've been quite lucky over the years to kind of retain... Um, yeah, the core, not only playing staff, but um, I mean, sorry, players, but but also staff, mm. which has been, I think, you know, enormous for our, our building of our culture and, and standards and um, our progression forward. But knowing we're so close, like, oh, I feel like it's, it's such a, um, there was no, you know, there was no outright discussion or not that I know of anyway. I was always, <laughs> I was always like, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, players, I guess, after each season have to assess where they're at personally as well. And, um, you know, there are a whole heap of personal reasons why we play, but um, so, you, you know, you can't ever, I guess, um, yeah, blame anyone for, for needing to, to leave or, or do what they need to do personally. But knowing as a group how close we are and how, um, yeah, how much progression we've made together um, and, yeah, certainly, you know, you, you, money throwing around, you know, depending on the, the, the type of team you want to play in and the standards you want to be playing in, we're, we're building those standards. And that's kind of, I guess, a culture that you want to stay in. Mm. Um, and I, I think that's kind of what we're, we've built at Melbourne. It's an environment that the girls want to stay in. Um, 
So that's what I guess, you know, that's what you hope for. You want a, a place where people love coming to and coming back to and love playing footy in. Mm, consistency is such a feature of your team. Uh, it's as obvious even as a starting point with your head coach. There aren't many clubs in the AFLW that have had the same coach since the very first match. Mick Stanier, clearly um, you love, uh, he's taught you, he continues to teach you. We can observe things, Karen, from the grandstands and our screens, but where do you say that Melbourne is most improved as a unit in Season 7? Um, I guess it's uh, it's hard to pinpoint one thing, but like you said, with the continuity of you know Mick being there from from the start, and obviously he's had a certain vision, and and that's been able to progress over the years with the retention of the core group and also staff and Mick himself. Um, but I think you know it's a combination of um, probably maturity. With you know each season, it, you're pretty surprised with how you've always got your, your core group of leaders and people who are setting those standards consistently but then you've got I guess the younger crew that are, that are coming up and the more consistent we can get the, those girls um, in setting those standards and, and setting those behaviours um, like high performance kind of behaviours the closer those two groups kind of meet um, and then you get the whole team on one kind of one kind of page so I think from season six to season seven I think we've just got yeah, a combination of some of those younger girls, like, you know, you've got Fitzy and Bano and Luke Purcell, they're setting the standards now. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just a combination of um, girls maturing a little bit more um, and, yeah, certainly buying and probably, you know, that grand final loss is certainly uh, something that is in the back of our minds and, and we want to, yeah, we want to, I guess, achieve the, the ultimate goal at the end of the day. Is it a blessing for Melbourne that season seven was such a short turnaround? You know, in any other year, you would have had to wait a whole 12 months to have another bite at the cherry. And I think in 12 months, feelings can change. And you might lose the emotions, but it seems like those feelings are still so fresh for you. Yeah, I think for us, or our group in particular, the, the quick turnaround has been um, a positive. We've kind of been, haven't had too much time to dwell. Um, we've been able to kind of just hit the ground running into into things we need to work on, um, you know, ultimately to beat the best team. So, and, and that for us, um, you know, round one was Adelaide. Um, but yeah, for us in our group, I think where we're at, uh, you know, the first, yeah, the first few training sessions, I think pre-season, for this season, um, we kind of had to just calm everyone down because everyone was ready. <laughs> <laughs> we want it and we want it now. <laughs> everyone was ready to go, and um, you know, our group is. Yeah, I, I sometimes just think, wow, like we've got so many. I can't. I couldn't even name one on our list that just wasn't prepared to do whatever it takes to to get better and. Um, I think that's where we're at as a group at the moment, just the, the complete buy-in and, um, yeah, urgency to just get better and, and fix fix what we're needing to fix and um, honesty and transparency, transparency in the group where we can kind of just be honest with each other and I, I guess that's through having that core group together for so long, building those relationships, being able to have honest conversations around where things are at and, um, you know, I guess that over it does take time to build that culture, and I think we're in a real sweet spot now. With mm. we're able to, you know, it's we're able to have those conversations and be frank, and we know where we need to kind of individually where we need to be, and as a team where we need to be. It's very clear it seems this season. So hopefully we can just um, yeah keep keep building and. Um, get the job done week, week to week. You're talking about a lot of off-field stuff there and, and I totally get that that informs what's happening on-field. Can you give us an insight to what you think the Demons can still improve? Where's that biggest area for you guys to leap ahead and, and surge through and win that premiership? What on-field aspect of your game? I think it is, you know, I guess looking at round one this season, round two, it, it is that consistency um, and, you know, looking at our north, looking, yeah, looking at our game against north and um, it's probably it's probably consistency with, we let ourselves down a little bit with fundamentals, so just over overusing at times um, under pressure. Um, so, uh, yeah, again, 
you know, and something we discussed, how much, um, I guess, energy Adelaide's game took out of us and, and you know, whether whether or not that impacted us at all on um, on Friday night um, going into North's game. But I think just for us, consistency, um, yeah. And also, I, I guess, we're probably lacking a little bit of energy, so that can waver from, from time to time as well. So um, we talk a lot about, um, you know, we, demon spirit for us and, and that's, hunting you know um ruthless kind of hunting and um yeah winning the ball at the contest and, and then making good decisions from there so I, I think it's just consistency around that stuff and you talk about consistency five out of seven all australians ain't too bad mate that's that's a really good effort so you're obviously very consistent in, in what you do whether it's week in week out day in day out talk Shans, it's five out of six Oh my God! Of course. <laughs> Don't short sell our guests, please. Oh my God! My ma- well, sorry, she's she's gonna have six out of seven by the end of this year. Oh, guys, I didn't finish year twelve. I actually did. I'm just making excuses for myself. So, five out of six, Paxi. Talk us through what is important for you to be consistent as an athlete and. I know those little things on the field, absolutely, but what are the off-field things that are important for you to be consistent? Yeah. Um, I guess I guess the word is consistent. So I, I have a pretty, pretty consistent or standard routine um, week to week, certainly, you know, during football season. Um, and I, I don't know, I guess I'm just lucky to have wound up at Melbourne, I think, from the beginning because... Um, yeah, the, the stuff I've learnt since since joining that I've played football since I was six or yeah. seven. Eight. I guess just being in, firstly in a high performance environment, um, but also just the, the quality of coaching and the time that um, Nick and the crew put into us. Um, yeah, it, it's just phenomenal. Um, and and also I guess the accountability too. You know, we we all have a I guess a development plan and what we need to be looking at. Uh, across our game and areas that we need to be improving on or, um, you know, um, mastering. So the accountability is high, um, which I love because it's clear, it's transparent. Um, If there's a deficiency somewhere, I know that I need to, you know, put my head down and and, and fix that up. Um, And I, I guess too, as the years have rolled on and certainly in the last couple of years, we have had a little bit more time or hours um, to, to to get more training in, you know, and, and as as I guess the competition turned into full time, you know, professional kind of landscape, that's going to be um, more realistic for for athletes. But um, yeah, like for example, this morning we were in at the club for a couple of hours and, and doing um, a skill session and a gym session, whereas a couple of years ago we wouldn't have had the time or the hours available to do that. We would have probably been working in that time. Or, um, so, so yeah, it's, I guess, a combination of things. But um, I kind of know that I, I have to be on top of things and, you know, everyone's getting bloody good. So, uh, <laughs> so Karen Paxman must get better. Yes. <laughs> Lift that bar and Karen Paxman rises. Mm. And you are yeah. so, you just, you're one of those people, um, Karen, that, you know, you can form views looking at the way you play, you know, and you think, oh, well, Karen would be this kind of person off field. I think you match the way you play, you know, this ultimate team player. I, I even notice in your answers in this interview that it, everything sort of refers to others and, and you sort of deflect from you. Shani, we record this on Zoom. I look at Karen Paxman and go, I don't know if she's eating chia seeds or hemp powder or something with <laughs> glowing. Like, what the I hell? I know! And Her so, hair is precise. I, like, like, everything about her is perfect. The skin is the thing that's really jumping up for me. So, Karen, I would like you to please, for a moment, give us an insight to yourself and not the team. This is not about Nick. Nick. I, I thought you were going to ask for a skincare routine. No! This is not about Mick or support team or your teammates. What are you meticulous about as an athlete? Like, what do you, what is a little bit crazy meticulous about you that allows you to be you? Oh, gee whiz. I think I'm, I'm pretty, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I think, with 
um, my own standards, I think. Like, I, I, yeah, I guess the thought of, um, yeah, I guess, you know, you don't like to think about failing too much or not not being able to um, get out there and play, play your role. And I guess this is still flowing into the team, but yeah, the thought of being out there and not doing everything I possibly can, um, it's not a, yeah, that, that thought's not a good one. So I guess I'm, yeah, I guess away from footy and in terms of my preparation, I'm a, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and um, yeah, like things nice and, nice and organised and, uh, yeah, and I don't know how much that flows into t- training, but, you know, when, I, when I'm at training, I'm thinking, um, and this is, you know, again, just being lucky to be in a high-performance environment like Melbourne and having such a good culture to guide me, um, you know, you, you want to make the most of, absolute most of every session. Um, and, and certainly in the early days when we didn't have much time or contact hours at the club, Mick really drilled into us that, every minute is just so important um, and don't waste any opportunity. Um, and certainly with footy, it's such a fickle, fickle thing where you don't know what is around the corner. Um, so, you know, I'm playing this season, but I don't know, I don't know what next season potentially brings. Um, and it is so, like, if I'm just drilling a little harder here, like sleep, are you meticulous about getting a certain number of hours? I'm thinking of people that really would want to replicate you. Is it nutrition? Is it hydration? What kind of stuff do you do? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, sleep, I'm a massive sleeper. So anything under probably nine hours, I'm not, not too happy with. Um, I you <laughs> There's the skin answer right there. But um, I'm lucky at the moment in that I am studying alongside football, so I'm able to, to get those big hours in. Um, and for me, it's huge, that's huge because then I'm rocking up to training and I'm fresh, I'm ready to go. So that's probably, uh, uh, yeah, make sure I hydrate um, throughout the day because, again, I just feel like that gives me um, just that little bit more energy. Um, but food, yeah, I keep it pretty strict and simple with food. I, I love food. I'm a massive sweet tooth. I could just gorge on you know if i was you know yeah released to chocolate and whatever i could just, <laughs> there's nothing in the house like that because i can't stop um mm. so yeah it's just pretty plain for me and um pretty yeah pretty routine so you know wheat bix or oats in the morning salad and tuna and stuff for for lunches and and then generally we get fed at the club so that's just you know meat and veg or pasta or but yeah, if I'm let loose, I definitely, I oh, yeah, I love food. I have a sweet tooth in particular, so that's not great for my complexion, Sam. If I, <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a breakout the other week, so I had a little bit, oh! but no, I wasn't. But my skincare routine, if you're curious, it's literally um, <laughs> it's pear pear soap, um, oh. which I've grown up with. Yeah, it's as simple as that. So I just. Great. Wash my face down with that and a bit of um, They do say less is more. Yeah. So that's they do. All I, that's all I do. Oh, my God. Well, I think it's hydration because when you hydrate, your skin, yeah, it just looks phenomenal. So that, let's just get this right. So after the grand final win this year, um, are you going straight down to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? <laughs> oh, mate, that's, yeah. After, after we went, like, touch wood, if we... You know, if we win that grand final, there'll be, yeah, a lot of gorging on a lot of different things. So, <laughs> <laughs> on that, and Shans has just done what a lot of people have done, um, which is just sort of say that Melbourne is in the sweet spot to win this year's AFLW Premiership. Does that become, even at this very early stage, like a sense of weight on you? Um, personally, no. And I think, again, um, messaging within our group and our club is we've kind of been, and this is this is the last couple of years in particular, um, outside noise, like not not buying into it, um, and that goes with like performance too. Um, you might have media saying you, you've had a great game, or but you may not have played your role for the team. So we have a lot of focus around. Um, feedback we're getting is from within and, and not 
not taking on that outside noise. So certainly it's stuff that sometimes you can't ignore. And But I, I think from, from our group and our own self-belief, we, we know that we, we can go all the way and we know we can beat uh, any team when we're playing our best footy. But that's, that's the thing. It does take your best footy because there are a number of teams um, that, are, that are bloody good too. So um, I think we know, and certainly losing that grand final, we, we know what it takes. So again, it's just that bringing that consistency and um, yeah, that, yeah, building on it every week and um, yeah, not thinking too far ahead, I think as well. Karen, which players do you most admire in the competition? Oh, gee, I, I kind of, I'm drawn a little bit to the underdog or someone who doesn't get heaps of recognition, but I just know when I, whenever I um, have played played on them, they're, they're bloody tough um, and I just think so skillful. Um, so Lise Parker would be one that I, I um, yeah, look at her game and, and admire what she's doing and for such a young player as well. Um, and I think she's certainly helping lead that group as well. Um, so I, I really like uh, how she, she goes about it. Um, I would have many, but it's just you caught me off guard. <laughs> Not at all. I think Elise Parker's going to get a massive kick out of that because totally. that's coming from one of the most admired players in the comp. Karen, it has been a joy learning about uh, your sleep routines, the addiction to nine hours, and the fact that you use a very simple soap to get that very fabulous complexion. Uh, your men's team is playing a semi final against Brisbane on Friday, which is very exciting. You have an an upcoming match against St Kilda and then you play Brisbane um, who we are enjoying so much as well in the AFLW so best of luck for the next two weeks and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks Paxi. Thanks for having me guys take care.